Hey everybody, Mr. Duker back again with five important facts, five things you need to know about the War of 1812. Number one, trouble with England. So what is this war even about? Uh, basically, this is a couple of years after the American Revolution and England and the United States still aren't on great terms. England was kind of being naughty. Uh, they were disrespecting the United States, which is a young country and still trying to grow up and be independent. England didn't see it that way and basically was disrespecting the United States, doing a, numerous things to basically kind of insult American national pride. A few of these things were impressing sailors on the open ocean. So it was common at this time that the Royal Navy, the English Navy, used to confiscate sailors in the ocean and force them to work on English ships. The Royal Navy was very powerful, the biggest and strongest Navy in the world, but it takes a lot of men to crew these giant vessels. And so very common to kidnap, to capture, uh, basically kind of jail men you came across and force them to work on your ship. They don't like it, what are they gonna do? They can't really run away. You're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So they were uh, confiscating American ships, capturing the crews and forcing them to serve on English uh, Royal Navy ships, uh, basically taking away the United States' ability to trade and travel in the open ocean, uh, infringing on our ability of trade. Another thing England was doing was arming Native Americans in North America. So as the country was moving westward, England was arming the natives to try and fight back and resist against that, causing problems, friction, um, bloodshed. And again, the United States does not appreciate this. Uh, basically, England is kind of, like I said, um, infringing on our ability to kind of travel and trade out west and on the Atlantic Ocean. And this angered a lot of Americans. We weren't being treated with respect. England was messing in our affairs, basically. England was causing trouble. Two, the United States declared war first. So not terribly often, but there is a couple times in American history, we draw first blood, I guess you could say, and this is one of them. So basically, you know, the public was just incredibly fed up. Um, people wanted to go to war with England. They had insulted again our national pride, taken away our freedom of the, of the seas, and we needed to do something to make them stop, right? If the bully keeps picking on you, you need to kind of stand up for yourself and defend yourself, and that's kind of what this was. So under pressure, he didn't really want to, James Madison actually declared war on England before they declared war on us, June 18th, 1812. Can you guess why it's called the War of 1812? There you go, right there. Uh, but again, he didn't really want to do this, Rightfully so, not a good idea. The United States is still growing, still fairly weak, uh, and England is the most powerful nation in the world at this time. Uh, this bully is one you don't want to get in a fight with, but by then it's too late. Three, three, the president's mansion was burned. So before the White House was a thing, the president lived in what's called the President's Mansion, uh, which of course was in Washington, D.C. Now it actually was burned to the ground, but we're not there quite yet. England at the beginning of this war wasn't really concerned. They were busy, as England often was during this time, fighting wars somewhere else. Uh, wars of France and Spain were still going on. The United States, whatever, we'll deal with them later. We're not a threat to England in any way. And so they didn't really care too much that the United States had declared war way over in North America. However, when the wars with, Eng with France and Spain end, then England will turn their attention to us and not to our benefit. They um, basically invade the United States, march kind of unopposed into our capital and burn Washington, D.C. and the president's mansion to the ground. Madison had to evacuate. He barely escaped uh, minutes before the Redcoats came and threw torches in there. Um, so you don't hear about that often in the history books, the president evacuating his home because it's going to get burned to the ground by foreign soldiers. But that's actually what happened. Uh, Madison even um, commanded troops on the battlefield, right? 
Not often you get a sitting president. Many presidents had fought in wars before, but he's the only president who actually, while he was president, um, led troops in battle shortly after this, trying to kind of fight back and um, stop England from advancing and destroying and torching more things. But uh, yeah, kind of embarrassing. Your capital is burned to the ground. Probably why we don't talk about this war too much in the United States today. Four, there we go. The war is over in two years. So it's a very quick war. It doesn't last very long. It's one of those, again, rare examples where it's a war that actually ends pretty quickly. Most wars never, most wars last longer than people expect. But again, not this one. Uh, the United States quickly realizes, oops, uh, our bad. England's pretty powerful. We're probably not going to beat them. Um, let's not give them an excuse to come back and, and get revenge for the revolution, which was not that long ago. And so after, and probably, you know, having Washington burned to the ground will wake some people up. This is not a war the United States really wants to fight. England had enacted an embargo, a blockade on American trade. They could do that because they had a powerful navy and ours was still very small. So basically, uh, American business was getting hurt, people were losing jobs, people were losing money. And, you know, um, again, this is not a war we're going to win. England, on the other hand, was just sick and tired of war. They just fought against France. They just fought war against Spain. Don't forget the uh, American Revolution was not too long before this. And the Seven Years' War slash um, French and Indian War was even before that. So England is just, understandably, sick of fighting all these darn wars and so if we can just end this war of those silly americans for their silly reasons all the better so the war ends pretty quickly december 24 1814 and another reason we probably don't remember this war too much is very little changed uh there wasn't a lot of land that exchanged there wasn't you know it, usually you know when wars end you got to redraw maps governments change Countries change, boundaries change. War of 1814, sorry, War of 1812 ends in 1814. Very little change. It was just kind of back to the status quo. England maybe stopped doing some of those naughty things, but again, no real big changes when this war is over. Inconsequential. Five, Battle of New Orleans. The most famous battle from this war, from the American perspective, happened after it was over, right? So, in New Orleans in Louisiana, um, the most famous battle, probably because it's the one the United States ends up winning, um, happens uh, thanks to Andrew Jackson. So communication is very slow at this time, right? Uh, people in, in New Orleans had no idea the war ended about three weeks ago. They were still fighting. And so uh, Andrew Jackson, who was a, a, a local commander at the time, uh, tried to defend the port city of New Orleans from English attack. And he kind of famously rounds up this ragtag group of soldiers, people of all sorts come together to fight under um, Jackson, farmers and pirates and traders and trappers and mountain men and Native Americans and just all sorts of people. It's kind of, if you are familiar with uh, Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders and the colorful group of characters that fought there in the Spanish-American War. This is kind of like an early version of it. And they were able, again, to uh, defend New Orleans, give England a defeat, which, again, is inconsequential. It changes nothing because the war is already over. So this is a battle with really no meaning behind it. However... It does make Andrew Jackson, and you'll hear about him later, uh, he becomes a national hero. He becomes one of the biggest heroes in the country at the time, hero of eight, the War of 1812, because, again, he's really the only guy who kind of sticks it to England. It's an interesting story. This rambunctious group of, of Americans and, and other people kind of come together, and it's an unlikely victory for the Americans defeating a more powerful English force. But again, doesn't matter. The war's already over. So, all right, there we go. Five things about the War of 1812. Hopefully that uh, made some sense and was interesting to you. And uh, come back and watch some more videos and learn some more stuff on history. But that's it for today, and I'll catch you later.